dangerous pathway on that slide. And you would have said, we punish, we kick them out, and here it is. But we do it awfully young. And if we can't have kids that have experienced adversity in childhood do okay at home, because that's maybe where adversity is happening, or in their neighborhoods, because maybe that's where adversity is happening, and they can't be safe or welcome at school, are we surprised when they end up in our juvenile courts? We've also looked at ACEs and adult adversity. People with higher ACEs are more likely to experience incarceration as adults. They're more likely to become a victim of intimate partner violence. They're more likely to become drug addicted, to have a mental illness, to experience divorce. They're more likely also to have all of these other life challenges. And it turns out, statistically, people have adverse childhood experience plus adverse adult experiences have much deeper health and productivity challenges than people who just have ACEs. So if we can be successful stopping the escalation of adversity throughout life, we can make a big difference for parents. And then you probably, rec you probably um, recognize this set. Those are the five um, conditions that become ACEs for the next generation. And so we now, because we've added questions to our behavioral risk factor surveillance system, we can see that people Parents with higher ACEs are 14 times more likely to be passing multiple ACEs on to their children, even if they're preventing child abuse and neglect. 14 times more likely, even if they're preventing child abuse and neglect. These parents need a little hand. These are not choices. These are conditions that are the result of their own childhood experience coupled with our society's response, which often isn't that friendly. <laughs> so Dr. Anderson.